Activity 11.1 was an interesting activity because in this case, they gave you the debtors ledger of Morgan Bay traders and the creditors ledger of Morgan Bay traders. And they wanted you to prepare the debtors control account, the creditors control account, and the debtors and creditors lists as at 31 May 2018. Okay, so I love this exercise because it's everything we've done before, but they just ask it in a different way. So it makes you think a little bit. On the next page, you will see that they've given you the debtors ledger. You've got three debtors, T. Naidu, M. De Villiers, and P. Darwin. And you would notice that P. Darwin has a credit opening balance because at the bottom here, they said he returned goods to the business during the previous month, well, she, after she settled her account. So she has a credit opening balance. Okay, so when the month started, we actually owed her a little bit. Okay, now the first thing that I did is I used all of the values in my debtors ledger to compile my debtors control account. And it's actually so easy because the journals are given to you in the folio column. You just have to remember that you have to add the values for every, well, for all three debtors together to give you the total effect in the debtors control account. And it even shows you if it should go to the debit side or the credit side of the debtors control account. So very simple. Let's look at it. The opening balance of the debtors control account, I calculated as the opening balance of T. Naidu plus the opening balance of M. De Villiers minus the opening balance of P. Darwin. The reason why I subtracted P. Darwin is because it was a credit balance when the month started which gives me a total opening balance of 3,717. Then I looked at all the values in the debtors ledger that says DJ, so in other, in other words, all of the invoices, and you would have seen that there was an invoice on the 5th for M. de Villiers with 987 Rand, and there was an invoice on the 12th for P. Darwin worth 2,340 Rand. So I added them together to get my DJ value. Then I also noticed that there was a bank um, RD or a dishonored check in M. de Villiers' account worth 1,500 on the 21st. So I added that in there. And then the last thing that could go to the debit side of debtors control is journal debits from the general journal. So if you go and look at the general journal entries on the debit side of your entire debtors ledger, you will see that there was one entry on the third in T. Naidu's account where interest was charged on overdue account. And then there was one entry on the 21st where discount was cancelled in M. de Villiers' account. That's it for the debit side. Then on the credit side, I started with the CRJ values. Okay, I added bank and discount together, so I just kept it simple. And all of the CRJ values from the entire ledger are added together. So this 1,200 was on the 16th in T. Naidu's account, and then this 1,500 and the 167 was on the 15th in M. de Villiers' account, giving us, giving us a total CRJ value of 2,867. Then also on the credit side of debtors control, we've got debtors allowances. So I went to look for DAJ values and I saw that the 230 was on the 7th in M. de Villiers' account, that credit note. And then the 210 was on the 13th in P. Darwin's account. So that's a total DAJ value of 440. And then lastly, there were also some journal credits from the general journal, but there was only one. And it was when we wrote T. Naidu's account off on the 31st, 1,073 Rand. And then I just balanced my account. So I add the total debit side together and I got 8,754. And I determined my balance CD and my balance BD as 4,374. Then I quickly compiled my debtors list to just check myself whether I did the correct thing. Okay, so to compile your debtors list, remember you take the closing balance of every debtors account. So in other words, the last updated 
balance. T Nadi didn't owe us anything because we wrote his account off. M. De Villiers owed us 2,424. P. Darwin, 1,950. And therefore, this 4,374, the total of our debtors list is the same as our balance brought down in debtors control. Then, your creditors ledger was also given to you on the next page. Okay, so we have three creditors, Abram, Dealers, Colette Suppliers, and Buerta and Company. Okay, and once again, I compiled the creditors control account first, and then I compiled the creditors list. All of the opening balances are given to you, and then all of the entries indicates which journal is affected in this folio column, and it indicates whether it goes to the debit or the credit side of creditors control. So it's actually quite simple. In your creditors control account, I started by determining the opening balance of creditors control. So I said the value that we owe Abram dealers plus the value that we owe Colette suppliers plus the value that we owe Buerta and company gives us an opening balance of 22,178. Then I looked for all of the CJ values, in other words, all of the invoices in the creditors ledger. Okay, so to determine my total purchases value, there were two CJ entries. The first one was on the 12th in Abram's dealer's account, and then this 3,447 3, was on the 9th in Colette Supplier's account, giving us a total CJ value of 4,677. Then I also noticed that there was one GJ entry on the credit side of the creditor's ledger, it was in Abram Dealer's account on the 13th when we were charged interest. Okay, so that would be journal credits from the GJ 124 Rand. And then when I looked at all of the debit entries, I first dealt with the CPJ. Okay, so once again, I added bank and discount together to just keep it simple, all of the CPJ values in one line. So this 2,000 Rand comes from Colette Suppliers account on the 28th, we paid 2,000 Rand, and then this 4,500 and the 250 Rand was on the 5th in Buertan Company, we paid and we received some discount, giving us a total CBJ value of 6,750. Then also on the debit side, there was one more entry, it was a debit note on the 11th in Colette Suppliers. Debit notes indicate total returns from the CAJ. 450. There were no general journal entries in the creditor's ledger on the debit side, so you don't write journal credits, ach, debits, GJ0. That's unnecessary. Okay, so you can just leave that and you can start balancing your account to get your balance CD and balance BD of 19,779. And then lastly, you just quickly compile your creditors list by adding all of the values that we owe creditors together at the end of the month. So we owed Abrams dealers 10,319, Colette suppliers 4,989, Burton company 4,471, which gives us a total of 19,779 Rand owed to creditors at the end of May. And you will notice that this value is the exact same value as your balance brought down in your control account. As simple as that.